Hi, my name is Andrew and this is Mickey Man's RCT Station. In this video, we're going to go through 8 tips to improve your scenario play on Rollercoaster Tycoon. These tips, which are in no particular order, have helped me a lot in scenario play in the past, and hopefully you'll find them useful too. I also encourage you to watch Marcel Voss's video sharing his 42 gameplay tips in scenario play. The tips I'm showing here are intended to be in addition to the ones he has already presented. I have put a link to his video in the description below. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Pause the game before you reset a ride. Resetting a ride is sometimes required when cars and trains get stuck on the track. I'm sure all of you at some point have come across a water slide where the dinghies get stuck, usually after a breakdown where the dinghies stack up at the base of the chain lift. To reset the ride, you need to hit the close button twice and then reopen it. When the game is unpaused, all guests will leave the queue line as soon as you close it. This is sometimes unfavourable because it's likely that they've been waiting in there for a while and will be in a foul mood. In addition to this, they'll be in a crowd of guests leaving the line, making them even grumpier. These guests tend to be at a high risk of leaving the park if they don't find a ride easily afterwards. To get around this, simply pause the game, reset the ride by clicking the close button twice, open the ride, and unpause the game. Guests that were previously lined up will still be in the queue line and ready to get on the ride. You can use the same idea if you want to change the operating mode of a flat ride such as the Gravitron. Don't worry about entertainers and security guards. In my opinion, one of the most unnecessary costs you can burden yourself with are entertainers and security guards. As opposed to handymen and mechanics, security guards and entertainers are not essential to the operation of your park and an unnecessary expense particularly when you're new to the game. Security guards prevent vandalism occurring within a certain radius of their presence, but only extremely unhappy guests cause vandalism. You're better off spending money on improving the park, especially when replacing vandalized objects isn't that expensive anyway. Entertainers may look fun, but again, don't seem worth their cost to me. They do increase guest happiness a little when they walk past, but nowhere near as much as being on a ride. I would encourage you to watch Marcel Voss's video on security guards and entertainers for further detail, the link is in the description below. Get a cheap coaster as one of your first rides. This tip is more applicable towards pay for ride scenarios, particularly those with no pre-built roller coasters. Coasters are going to be one of your primary sources of income in pay for ride scenarios. Getting a small and profitable coaster up and running early will go a long way towards a stable income. If you spend all of your money on flat rides, income will generally be coming in at a much slower rate and you may find yourself in a difficult situation where you have no money and no significant source of income. I'm suggesting a small coaster to start with because you also don't want to spend all of your initial cash on a single coaster. The Junior Coaster, Virginia Reel, and Wild Mouse Coasters are all good candidates to start with here. As well as a generally higher income, coasters tend to attract the most guests to your park, so if you get a cheap coaster up and running early, you're going to give yourself a nice little influx of guests early on. Target at least one coaster with an intensity rating in the range between 3 and 5. The most common intensity preference for guests in the majority of scenarios in RCT is more than 4. Very happy guests will also be willing to go on rides up to 2.3 intensity points outside their preferred range, both below and above. The lowest intensity preference I've seen in the game for a guest is less than 3. This means that if you have a coaster with an intensity rating in the range of 3 to 5, virtually any guest will ride it so long as they're reasonably happy. It might seem counterintuitive to purposefully target a lower intensity rating, as a coaster with lower intensity often has a consequence of lower excitement rating, which combine to reduce the amount you can charge for the ride. However, since more guests are willing to ride it, it increases the chance they will stay in the park. Besides, you should still be able to charge at least $5 per ride, which should still generate plenty of income. One method you can use to hit these smaller intensity ratings is purposefully hitting what's called a stat penalty. Each coaster type has a unique set of requirements such as length, drop height, or hitting a lateral g-force value. If it doesn't meet one or more of these requirements, you get what's called a stat penalty on your excitement, intensity, and nausea ratings. For the majority of coaster types, this is a simple division by 2 to all of the stats for every requirement you fail to meet. Here is a quick example. Currently, the first and largest drop for this mine train coaster after the station underground sits at 5 meters, which helps the coaster produce an excitement rating of 7.5 and an intensity rating of 6.9. 
reducing the height of this drop to 4 meters, which is less than the minimum drop height requirement for the mine train coaster, induces the stat penalty and produces an intensity and excitement rating of around the 3.5 mark, which is the one I went for in this park to get the lower intensity rating. One of the reasons shuttle loop coasters, as well as Marcel's micro corkscrew coaster, are so useful and such good money makers, is that apart from their low cost and high throughput, is that their intensity rating is around the 3 to 5 mark, so just about every guest, presuming they're happy enough, will be willing to ride them. Optimize the mode limit or operating mode of your gentle and thrill rides. This is definitely one of those tips that fall under the micromanagement category, but it can be worth tinkering with the operating modes of flat rides on the odd occasion. Quite a few gentle and thrill rides enable you to adjust its operating mode, or adjust the number of swings or rotations it does per ride. To see the operating mode or number of swings and rotations, click the gear icon on the ride menu. To change the operating mode, you'll need to close the ride first. You don't need to do this to adjust the number of swings or rotations. Changing to a more intense operating mode means you can generally charge more for the ride because of its higher stats, but the lower throughput will usually mean that the higher ride ticket price is nullified anyway. However, the increase in stats, particularly intensity, can often make the ride attractive to more guests. Let's take the pirate ship as an example. You might want to increase the number of swings because it can make it a more attractive ride to guests with a higher intensity rating preference, which can be very useful early on in the scenario and you're still working on your first coaster, although this will greatly reduce its throughput. Park value will also increase when your ride stats increase. For example, in OpenRC T2, a brand new topspin or Gravitron in beginner mode contributes $5,940 of park value. Changing the operating mode to Berserk mode increases its contribution to $8,800. This may not sound like a lot, but if you apply similar methods to other flat rides in a larger park, it will definitely start to add up. Here's a table with the minimum and maximum stats of some common flat rides based on their corresponding operating mode limits. From what I saw, these stats apply across all versions of RCT, including the original, with the exception of the Twister or Scrambled Eggs, whose stats are a bit lower in the original. Having said all of this, there isn't anything wrong with sticking with the default settings of most flat rides, particularly if you're new to the game. Build more covered rides in a scenario with a wet climate. You may have noticed how lines for covered rides such as the merry-go-round fill up more quickly when it starts raining. An interesting observation I've made is that guests ignore their intensity preference and happiness level for covered rides when it's raining in RCT1 and vanilla RCT2. However, this does not seem to be the case for open RCT2. Covered rides are pretty self-explanatory in that they offer cover from rain. Rides like the Carousel, Haunted House, Circus Show, Observation Tower, 3D Cinema, as well as some transport rides fall under the covered ride category. The same rule as in the previous tip applies to roller coasters that are built completely underground. Coasters built completely underground will remain popular with guests when it's raining. This ensures your coaster should be profitable regardless of the weather. Another interesting observation is that it also appears to work when at least 50% of your coaster is covered. It can be tricky in some scenarios with the limited depth available, but a powered launch looping coaster with a few tight turns can often do the trick. Make a save file and back it up just before you complete a scenario. A good habit to get into is saving your park just before you complete the scenario objective. This way you can simply open the save game and re-complete the scenario with minimal effort. This is extremely useful if you've ever lost your scenario completion progress due to reinstalling the game or losing a hard drive. And there were my 8 tips to improve your scenario play in Rollercoaster Tycoon. Hopefully you found these useful and can apply them yourself at some stage. If you have any tips and suggestions yourself, feel free to share them in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.